All right, everybody. It has been uh, almost two weeks since our last video, and I've gotten a lot done on the van. A little sneak peek there. We're going to go back and talk about that in a second. Um, where I'm at on the build. Uh, I've talked to you guys before. I kind of split this build up into four phases. Phase one was getting the van running properly, getting it titled and registered. That's done. Uh, phase two was uh, I had a bunch of maintenance that I wanted to do on the van, change diff oil, transfer case oil, uh, so forth and so on. That's done. Uh, phase three is I wanted to go through with the traditional RV systems, figure out what I'm going to keep and what I'm not, and tune up uh, what I am going to keep. That's done. Uh, that also That phase also included going around the outside of the van and squaring away a few things I had to square away with. And then the final phase, which is probably going to be the longest phase, but is doing the interior of the van, which is actually building out the coach portion, which is probably what we're all waiting for, myself included. But I wanted to get all those other tasks kind of done, some of the ones that may be not the most pleasant, but I think they're very important. And let's go take a look at the van. But before we go, I wanted to take a quick shout out to uh, my buddy Eric over at Golden Mate. He provided me with this uh, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery here. Uh, there will be a link down below, but this is the battery that I am going to use in the van when I build out the electrical system. I'll have a full video of that uh, when I do the electrical system at a later time. But there will be a link for this in here. Uh, these, uh, this company does uh, really nice batteries, really competitive prices. And if you guys might be interested, there's a link. They make 100 amp hour, 200 amp hour. And don't quote me, but I think they might make 300 amp hour. Let's go look at the van. All right, guys, there she is. And she is looking good. As you guys can see, I had a couple friends suggest that I just go ahead and pull off at a minimum that middle uh, decal on both sides. And it completely changed the look of this van. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm usually pretty good at looking at uh, and seeing... Uh, what the diamond in the rough so to speak which i certainly recognized but i thought the paint job on this van was a lot worse than it was but uh i got that decal pulled off and that was one heck of a job i'll talk about that later and i went through and scrubbed this van inside and out multiple times and this thing turned out this paint is in fantastic condition and i think the van is looking really good so let's get right to it uh, the outside of this van is almost completely done. There's a few minor things I'm doing, but let me touch on what I uh, have completed. Um, real quick, for those who might have missed the last video, uh, got the AC pod in, got the spare tire, got the jerry can. Uh, over on this side, uh, if you guys recall up here, um, I had some vents that were in really bad shape that were for a three-way fridge. Of course, that fridge is going to be replaced with a more modern DC compressor fridge. So I put in these panels, um, and uh, I think they were okay um, when I, especially after I had uh, uh, got those decals off and just saw what a beautiful paint job sat there. Um, I they weren't my favorite addition, um, so. I had a viewer uh, give a suggestion of actually going down to, to a metal shop and seeing if they would replace it and paint it. And uh, that's a really good suggestion. I wasn't ignoring that person, but for a variety of reasons, it's just not practical. Um, and uh, so I went ahead and kept the panels. But what I did do is, and I think it kind of goes with the rugged motif that defines this van, is I created that, that bottom one. Uh, is actually going to function as a lashing point, uh, very much akin to the lashing point, if you guys recall, that I put up there. So what I do uh, to accommodate that is I use these pieces of hardware right here called a footman's loop. Okay, let's go in the garage. I think I have some handy here. So these are what they call a footman's loop. Okay, and these are one inch. These are a metal um they, they, there's all kinds of varieties you can find of these on Amazon and eBay and probably your local hardware store. These ones I got here are pretty, uh, particularly pretty good quality. They've got a nice paint job on them. Anyways, so what I do though is these are one inch, so they're perfect for uh, these one inch ratchet straps, which are very common. 
and I reinforced this panel on the inside, drove those in with some screws so they're nice and tight. And in this case, I put on uh, some baby uh, traction boards, but you guys can imagine that uh, uh, your imagination is the limit there as far as what you can use. And the more and more I've kind of used these lashing points on Sam for 7.0 and now this, I think they're a good idea. Even if you don't have something that you want to immediately put on there, it's a nice feature, particularly on a vehicle like this that kind of has a rugged motif, it's four wheel drive, etc. It's a nice place to be able to stow a few items. So got that done. That's what we modified. Um, one thing that was desperately needed was these steps down here, okay? So I've got one on the passenger front. I put one over this side door here, and then on the driver's side. Uh, these are, uh, you can just get these, you know, Amazon or a lot of other details. These are Bully brand. Um, these are actually a cast aluminum. So they're lightweight, probably have less uh, corrosion issues. And uh, essentially they bolt uh, and with a sheet metal screw up, up behind here into pinch weld area here of the body of the vehicle. Um, some feedback, I watched a couple installation videos on YouTube is a lot of people suggested reinforcing this pinch weld when you put these in. And so that's what I did. I just bought a one inch wide piece of galvanized steel and drove a few extra bolts. And these things turned out really sturdy and uh, I hope will provide years of use. And I did the same thing and reinforced it over on the passenger or on the driver's side. Over here in the front, uh, the grill is missing right now, but what I am doing is I'm painting that black. You guys will also notice that uh, a little bug shield there. I replaced that, I got a new one because the original one was broken. So I'm not done with the grill right now. I'm just tidying up a few things, but you can see right there it is getting painted black. I think that will look pretty darn nice in there. All right, as you guys can see, we've been, I've been busy. Solar panels are up. That is two 200 watt panels for a total combined uh, solar capacity of 400 watts. Um, that was a uh, pretty interesting project. I, I knew I would be able to get them up there, but I did have some concerns about how they would look and how secure they would be. And in the end, I was very, very satisfied. I think they have a really nice low profile uh, and I think they are very strong and are gonna hold up pretty well. A couple notes, um, I mounted them primarily using these solar panel mounts. These are aluminum, you just get them on Amazon. Uh, all kinds of brands make them. I think these are a Renergy brand. They're relatively inexpensive. Uh, so this top portion here, well actually most solar panels or you could drill your own holes, have holes. And this mounts in there. And then the bottom portion here with these two screw holes actually screws into whatever the material you're mounting it on. Now I certainly didn't want to and don't like mounting directly into a surface like that uh, fiberglass top there. But in this case I had no choice. But I was careful, measured multiple times, got the cut right in there first time without making any errors, and just made sure I sealed it up really good with the high quality exterior grade caulking. And uh, if you guys recall from prior conversations, this roof has a little divot on the, on the top portion, meaning it goes in a little bit where the rooftop AC would have mounted. So these solar panels go right over the top of that, and that allows, and I'll show you guys on the inside, I have a vent fan in there, which allows me to open it up underneath the solar panel. So it kind of really helped out with a lot of real estate. And I don't know if it'll make much of a difference. I think it could, but it does shade that rooftop vent fan very well. So, but these panels, I was very pleased. Uh, the top of this roof has a slight angle inward on both sides and then flattens out of the top. It's gonna be a little hard to show here in this video, but each of those panels have a slight angle to the side and then they meet in the middle, which I'm totally fine with. It might optimize a little bit some of these solar impent depending on how the vehicle's parked and the angle of the sun. Let's go take a look at the other side. Man, getting those decals off just made this van pop. I also went up and uh, just scrubbed the heck out of the top of that, of the uh, high rise portion there. And that thing is in great, beautiful, great shape. Talked about it in the last video, but got the two top vents, which will be over the bathroom and the uh, kitchen in. So yeah, we're coming together guys. Uh, everything is, 
The outside of this is, uh, like I said, nearly done. There's just a few little minor things that I need to correct here and there. Um, I am the generator cover over there. You guys can see, especially now with uh, how nice and shiny this uh, paint is, is a little bit yellowed. And I'm going to paint that and maybe throw a decal or two on there just to kind of make it look a little nicer. Um, but I have started on the inside. Not a lot to show. But let's jump on in there and take a look. All right, guys, what we've all been waiting for is one side note. Uh, even with this, uh, my little baby traction boards here, this door opens and stays open just enough. All right, what we've been waiting for is the interior. Let me go wide angle on you guys here. Um, so first and foremost, uh, I had a bunch of wires right there, if you guys recall. I pretty much pulled all those out, kind of organized what I need to. Uh, for most of the DC wiring in here, I'm just going to rewire it just like I do the campers. Um, some of the AC core, uh, all the AC wiring, um, I will keep some of that just to reuse it, but, uh, got all that organized and I've started putting in the soundproofing, uh, put it over the, uh, both of the, uh, wheel wells there, got it on the floor. Um, I, I'll talk about this in a later video. I'm going to do a little something with the different with the floor than, uh, you guys mostly see in van builds, but I'll talk about that later. But it'll be a method to help kind of maximize the vertical space in here. Because uh, even with the high top on here, there is some limitations. Um, I ran out of my soundproofing material. And I've got some more on order. But of course, I'll go through and get this finished. Ca a word of note and caution. Take my experience as a lesson here. Uh, the inside of this camper, I literally have scrubbed it down three different times. And uh, I'll just cut to the chase. Uh, though I'm aware of the hazards of mixing chemicals, I thought I was being safe and doing everything appropriately. But in the process of me cleaning the inside of this to make sure it is completely clean and sanitized, um, I inevitably mixed some chemicals somewhere uh, and uh, produced a pretty nasty, um, a pretty nasty noxious gas in here, and it. It overtook me a little bit. I mean, I caught it and I was out and didn't pass out or anything, but uh, kind of messed me up for a day or two. So uh, I'm a big uh, a big dork there. Um, even with me being aware of the issues and problems with mixing different common household chemicals, I still did it and it got me a little sick. I don't think I have any permanent damage or anything, thankfully. But a word of caution to all of you out there, be very, very, very careful, even if you think that you don't. I, I highly recommend just pick one good cleaner, clean the inside of this, um, uh, and uh, just be careful. But outside of that little warning, got the inside of this thing all wiped down and clean, started putting in the soundproofing material, uh, got a few little things uh, buckled up uh, as far as that were rattling around. And I've taken this on a few rides. I did... Uh, uh, ultimately changed the transmission fluid, which I had been kind of going back and forth on, but uh, it's kind of a long story, but I did decide to do it. I did put in some of that, because uh, I, I didn't know the maintenance history essentially is a problem. And uh, I did put in some of that uh, Lucas uh, uh, transmission uh, conditioner, I think it's called. And uh, in short, transmission's running fine, so I have no issues. I did put quite a few miles on it. Um, but my point to all that is uh, I did that after I put in some of the soundproofing and this stuff makes an incredible difference. So if you guys are doing your own van build uh, or you have the occasion in one way or the other to put in some of this uh, soundproofing material, do it. Uh, there's all kinds of brands out there. It is kind of pricey. Uh, the replacement I ordered to put on some of the additional wall panels is an Amazon branded stuff that was significantly less expensive. And I'm going to try it out. Not, this is not sponsored or anything. This is just me buying it. Uh, but I'm going to, I'll, I'll let you guys know if, if maybe you guys can get away with some of the uh, uh, less expensive sound deadening material. But nonetheless, whether you get expensive stuff or find that we can kind of skimp and get some of the more affordable stuff, uh, it makes a huge difference. Uh, this van is coming together. You drive it down the road. It runs great. And uh, it doesn't sound like you have a can of rocks going around in the back here. So, but in, in closing, guys, as you guys can see, got a lot done. And uh, I think the uh, exciting part is to keep coming. Uh, 
If you guys made it past my ugly mug there on that uh, thumbnail, I appreciate it. Hope you guys keep watching, uh, and I really do appreciate all of your comments. I do try to respond, but if I don't, it does not mean that I didn't get them and I don't appreciate them. So thanks a lot, guys, for watching. And if you're in the market for a lithium iron phosphate battery, um, Golden Mate is the place to go. There'll be a link in there for the 200 amp hour one and their website. Check it out. Thanks a bunch, guys.